Hello, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. It is a beautiful day here in Boston. It's been raining outside. I love the rain. I uh, <laughs> just got back from taking my dog for a little walk through the park and um, it's just been so beautiful. And just to cap off a little perfect day, I wanted to film another one of my, uh, <laughs> of my zine collection shares, <laughs> zine collection share videos. So today the theme is pagan and witchcraft. I I have a few other zines that probably could have been in this category if it wasn't such a big category for me because I have quite a few that would kind of fall into that. So I've split it up into sort of some subcategories like I have some esoteric and more occult stuff and then I have some more um, uh, fiction stuff in in a separate one where it's it's pretty pagan influenced but it's I would still consider it to be fiction um Fiddler's Green zines Fiddler's Green publications have their entirely own category because I have a little collection going of those so this is just going to be sort of general zines more about paganism and witchcraft and witches and witchcraft practices anyway I'll just show them off and then the theme will make sense to start things off, I've got this zine called A Brief History of Witchcraft. This is a uh, reprint of a vintage or historic chapbook slash zine um, from 1866, actually. And it was originally written or printed and published, as it says right here on the cover, printed and published by J. Taylor and Son. And it is its full title is a Brief History of Witchcraft with a special reference to the Witches of Northamptonshire, collected in great part from original sources. Um, now it is published, or this, this, you know, re this modern reprint was published by prior publications. This zine definitely reads like a very old zine. Here's the size of the text, by the way. It is dense. This little zine, you know, it's 18 pages, but it is, it is so, so intense. It is like reading much more than that. There's probably at least, you know, 15,000 words in here, 10 or 15,000 words. Maybe that, I mean, maybe I shouldn't even guess, but it is a lot. And <laughs> this is clearly written by outsiders who are trying to demonize witches and witchcraft in this zine. And they're basically, when you think about the context in which this was written in 1866, at the time there was a burgeoning um, renew, renewal of interest in witchcraft and spiritualism and paganism and, you know, by the time the turn of the century comes about it'll be in full swing and everybody's all into it. So this zine I assume was printed with the intention of reminding people, or reminding people, I guess, that witchcraft was real and that it was very serious. So this is all written in a very critical way and in a very, um, <laughs> you know, going on about the dangers of witchcraft. I think the way, the thing that captures this the best, I'll just read a little bit from the back here. Um, this is from just the very last thing, the conclusion. Yet, after all, the notion of witchcraft was no innocent and romantic superstition, no scion of an elegant mythology, but in its proper guise, altogether vulgar, repulsive, bloody, and loathsome. We may laugh at the absurd creations of a rustic elf lore, and we shall be charmed with the lightsome tricks of an Ariel, but we can have no sympathy with that dark and ferocious creed which took its rise in an atmosphere of suspicion and found its proper end only in the most revolting cruelty. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of what they're talking about. They're saying they're they're justifying uh, witch trials. Despite that, I still really like the scene. Um, in part, just because it's nice to have a little piece of history. I really enjoy historical research. I really enjoy learning about where witchcraft came from and just different perceptions of it. I love occult history, all that stuff. So it's a really good zine just for seeing that. And it's also reading it from a modern perspective 
And from the perspective of somebody who is now involved in witchcraft and the occult, I'm not exactly a witch. I wouldn't just define myself as a witch. That's not really here or there. The point is, <laughs> it's really interesting as a modern um, reader to see just how far we've come, how far the perception of witchcraft has come, and to really appreciate the revival, I guess, of witchcraft. And basically all the things that they're talking about, about how evil it is, it's, of course, it's either straight up wrong or it is done in a way that's clearly meant to um, exert some sort of control or force over them. And the reason I can say that with confidence actually has to do with the next scene. So just to wrap up, this is, again, A Brief History of Witchcraft, and you can find it from prior publications. I believe it is still out and about. I got this several years ago from a now-closed store in Berkeley, California called Castle in the Air, which was a beautiful, <laughs> really cool, um, it was an art, arts and crafts store, but with a lot of um, classic materials. I won't get into it, but anyway. The fact that they had this zine <laughs> shows you already that they were really cool. The next scene that I have to show off in this category, like I said, it uh, really elucidates a lot of things about the previous zine, and it's called Burning Women, The European Witch Hunts, Enclosure, and the Rise of Capitalism. So, this, this previous zine is talking about the European witch hunts, or, you know, the English witch hunts, and it's talking about it in a, in a favorable way, um that was a little closer to the date and it was written from a uh, perspective that was more steeped in the Puritan culture of the time. This is an overtly anti-capitalist, um, pro-witchcraft, feminist publication <laughs> that obviously has a very different perspective on witchcraft. And it looks at all of the, um, it, it looks at all of the issues and all of the notions that were exemplified in the previous zine, and and it um, criticizes them here. So just to give a little idea of some of the stuff, I'll just read off some of the things in the table of contents. It has um, the historical background, enclosures and the rise of capitalism, the church and the state, how the trials were executed, independent women, indigestible independent women is how they describe it, which... I love that word um, for describing the sexism and bigotry that exists towards independent women, which of course, that is what a witch is, and that is sort of, um, that is what they hated about witches. And that's what people still hate about witches, is this idea of seizing your own power. Anyway, uh, it has stuff about social control from village to state. Reconstructing Women's Sexuality, Wise Women Healers and the Medical Profession, Birth and Midwives, The Rise and Destruction of Science, Older Women and the Rise of Private Property, Organized Women, Organized Resistance, The Witch Trials Crush Resistance to Capitalism. And it has a lot of recommended reading and information in the background. So talk about historical research. This is a really excellent zine for that. It, uh, by the way, it's published by Last Word Press, and they have a ton of really amazing zines. I've sort of split them up into their appropriate categories, but I have a bunch of their zines. Um, so anyway, this is a, it's, it's a very well-researched historical, uh, look at witch trials and just the general perception of witches from, um, like, how early does it start? I think the Renaissance, it starts pretty early, from the Middle Ages to um modern times basically and it and it talks about it from a feminist perspective i will say it is not explicitly anti-trans women by any means it is not turf bullshit it's just that this is talking very much about cis women and that's pretty much where they (laughs) that's that's um that's what they're focusing on historically I guess, which, you know, it's understandable, I guess, given what they're talking about. Um, 
and the fact that it's it's talking very historically but again i have i have a lot of feelings about um trans erasure throughout history i'll just the point is i'm just bringing it up to say that that is not the focus of this book or it's, it's not the focus of this zine so just be aware of that when you're going in that by no means means it's a bad zine it is really fascinating it's really interesting it's a great anti-capitalist view of um of witchcraft and of how it's affected women and how it's been used to control women throughout the ages so highly recommend very interesting read burning women again by last word press so now the next scenes that i have are going to get a little more into personal witchcraft and modern witchcraft and how modern witches exist and use their craft today so the first one i have is one that you might have seen before this is brain scan 33 uh by alex Reck, who runs portland button works and is a very prominent zinester this is uh brain scan is their perzine and this is an exploration of secular witchcraft um this particular issue of brain scan is about what it means to be a secular witch how alex came to that understanding of themselves how their practice evolved it's a little bit more of a personal um personal exploration of it but it is still very definitional and alex does a really good job of explaining what secular witchcraft is and how their practice evolved um how you could be a witch without being wiccan a lot of it is is sort of is uh it's very approachable it's very introductory for people who don't know anything about uh witchcraft and it's still interesting as someone who knows a little more about it to or is you know is involved in it even to see how alex approaches the idea of witchcraft and how uh, Alex approaches the practice in their own lives. So here's, I'll just flip through it a little bit here. Um, and this is a packed full of information. This is, this scene is chock full. It is, how many pages is this? 64 pages. It, <laughs> you know that's crazy there's a bunch of books in the back there's some uh explanations of rituals and practices that alex uses with sort of recommendations for how you might use them so here's something about the full moon night and some stuff about let's see what else we've got here we have some witchling tips which are you know it's ad advice that Alex would have wanted to hear. And I think that a lot of these tips are really good at characterizing uh, Alex's approach to witchcraft in general. You don't have to buy all the things. You don't need all the fancy witchy altar tools, especially if you don't even know if it will be useful later. You can totally use things you already have. And that goes on for quite a while. Another tip. There is no universal witchcraft. If you don't want to work witchcraft into religion, don't. Maybe secular witchcraft is for you. If you don't want to work with deities, don't. If forests give you the creeps and you love cities more, great. Maybe urban witchery is for you. Make your witchcraft your witchcraft. So it's, it's nice. Here's, you know, Wicca does not equal witchcraft. It is a, just a very <laughs> in-depth, um, exploration both of what modern witchcraft is what diy witchery and diy witchcraft is to alex and you know what secular witchcraft means it's very interesting i will be perfectly honest i i like it and i will be keeping it of course i don't refer to it very often because a lot of it is so introductory and so I love these tips and they're great reminders. And it was really interesting to be able to see what Alex's approach to things, to, to the witchcraft practice is. It's not necessarily something that is a useful reference for me personally. And that's just because I have a lot more knowledge of it.
but anyway still highly recommend there's also another brain scan that's about witchcraft it's 34 and that one is more um more of a guide book it has different suggestions for how to play around with witchcraft how to do not magic how to do different you know how to create sigils how to do different witchy things just to feel it out and see if it's something that you might want to get involved in i i have no idea where i put that it is it is somewhere in this room on my many bookcases but uh that's another alex rec publication about secular witchcraft if you're interested in it the next zines that i have to show off are grammary i have five six and seven this is a zine series created by kd hume uh <clears throat> this is a zine series created by kd hume and i would describe it as like a diary of kd's witchcraft practice and it's really interesting so you can see how witchcraft is integrated into someone's life into a modern witch's life here's a description of the zine just from the back grammary is a deeply personal ever-changing seasonal perzine of a queer witch poet in the pacific northwest spells essays creations records of celebrations etc here's a little of the interior you have, um, sorry, <laughs> you have a description of a summer solstice ideas, ideas for a summer solstice ritual. You have descriptions of the full moon and different holidays that this witch celebrates. You have um, some spell ingredients. You have inspirations and... Um, <laughs> Here, you know, inspiration, Aunt Frances and Aunt Jet of Practical Magic. I love Practical Magic. It's one of my favorite books. Emulate their floppy hats, cats everywhere, glorious Victorian architecture, beautiful and productive garden, etc. Don't emulate their irresponsible and non-consensual use of magic, of love magic, or their bad timing. So it's really fun. And some of it gets more... Um, a lot of it is very personal, and a lot of it is personal descriptions. I would describe it as like a witch's diary, and it's really interesting. I got these in a trade where I sent over some of my tarot zines, and it was really lovely to be able to meet them, you know, you know not exactly meet them in person, but meet them through their zine, and to be able to do that trade, I really enjoyed it. Um, there's some art involved here this one says transitions are dangerous scary difficult vital sacred magical necessary and epic these are really sweet um also i want to do a shout out that kd is putting together a museum of contemporary witchcraft and for that it is um collections of magical items or you know, they have my zines in there and just uh, expressions of modern witchcraft instead of historical witchcraft. So if you have anything that you would like to have featured in this museum, you can contact them on, I contacted them through Etsy. I'll of course have links and everything down below where you can, you can contact them. So highly recommend if you have anything to please share it because I think this is such a brilliant idea and I'd really love to see it get off the ground. Once again, this is Grammary or Grammarai. I apologize if I've been pronouncing it wrong this whole time. And there are more of this series on their website. So please check it out. Okay, and the next scene that I have to show off is called Everyday Magic. This is Everyday Magic number two. Between is the title of this particular issue. And this is done by Finn Oaks. I would describe this zine as a more poetic, um, deep thought, imaginative, mystical kind of work. It's musings on witchcraft and on nature and they are very beautiful and very inspiring to read these zines so 
that says magic is real our magic is real um what does it mean to ground into land that is stolen what does it mean to ground into land so scarred talks about white supremacy and talks about um real environmental issues and really gets into what it means to be a witch or just a magical person. I'm not sure if Finn describes themselves as a witch, but just what it means to be pagan or or connected with the earth in a in a magical way in this day and age. And it's sort of there are some little Persian diary components and there are some musings and there are some poetries. I, I guess musings is a good word for it. It's a, it's a musing zine and it's really, it's really beautiful and it really makes you think about a lot of things. Here's one, one page about liminal spaces and what, what that means. What is a liminal space and thoughts on it. So if you are looking for something to really make you think about your relationship with the earth, your relationship with magic, um, or theirs, if you're, if you're just curious about it, I really highly recommend this one. I return back to this zine. It's, it honestly, it hurts my heart a little bit, but in a good way, it grabs my heart. And so I return this zine, I return to the zine a lot when I am in the right headspace for it. And when I really just want to, to think magically if that makes any sense everyday magic this is number two and that is again by finn oaks i believe the name according to this the name of the zine project is wild oats and nettles of course i'll have links and everything below too all right next up i've got moon zine by heather anniker and this is a pretty short little zine that just goes through each of the moon phases and talks about what that means symbolically and what that means magically and how you might integrate that into a magical practice. So for example, while I'm on the full moon page, it says energy is at its peak. This is the time to bring your intuition to fruition or to its next step. It is also a time to gather in community, connect to this powerful lunar energy and become a magnet for what you what you wish to bring into your life. What is the next step? Call on the moon's energy to support you in taking it now. And so there's one of those for each of the moon phases. Um, there's this beautiful art on the back. There's a few little descriptions about um, how the moon supports them and, and why you might wish to start working more in line with the moon. Here's the thing about this scene. I think it is a brilliant idea and I really love lunar stuff. That's actually most of what is probably the most witchy of my, um, the, the most witchy thing that I do, I guess, is I, I do a lot of tarot spreads and I, uh, that are in line with the moon and I really like it. I feel bad for saying this because of course I always want to support small creators and I want to support zinesters and maybe this won't be the case for you but for me this zine was just a little too expensive um for me. <laughs> I got it again at Quimby's. Um I got it for six dollars and sixty six cents. Love the price and all you know as a number. <laughs> but it just didn't totally feel like it had enough content for me. And maybe this is because I actually already have a book called The Moon Book by Sarah Faith Gottesdiener. I'm just reading it off my shelf here. And that goes into a lot more depth about each moon phase and it has sort of a similar feeling, but it's a little more comprehensive. And so maybe this was just repeating some information that I already had and that's why it felt more expensive to me. If you don't want to drop a whole $30 on 
a more comprehensive book, then maybe this will be perfect for you. And maybe it'll be just the right way to sort of get into it. And maybe you just really like these pages as a way of uh, meditating on them in a way where you can just open it up and really get immersed in the zine and in the artwork. It just didn't really work for me that way. But I still really want to show it off and I still am, you know, I, I still, I still very much appreciate it for what it is and I appreciate um, being able to see other lunarly inclined people out and about making stuff. So this is Moonzine by Heather Anaker. Okay, I've got two more here. I do have a lot of these zines. That's why I had to split it, split it up. Um, this is Witch Tips by uh, Rain Klar. The zine project is Small Small Witch. And this is beautiful, by the way. I would describe this as an introductory level grimoire, I guess. So, and it's very well, it's beautifully illustrated. It's got such a great vibe. And by the way, this paper is crazy thick. It's, it's like a very thick recycled paper. So it feels, it feels substantial when you're reading this and it lays flat really nicely. So I could see you using this as an actual grimoire. Um, you've got pages on crystals and what different common crystals mean, how you might cleanse them if you do cleansing stuff. I don't really do cleansing stuff. Um, incense, you've got... See, they're so thick, it's even hard to grab the pages sometimes. You've got, again, some moon magic and just a little bit about the sort of magic and the sort of spells that you'd want to cast on each moon phase. You've got spells of the day. Um, you just have a lot of different, I'm, I'm about to show off the whole zine here. That's probably not fair, but you know, you have a lot of really interesting stuff. It's good introductory level stuff and completely beautifully done. This, uh, personally wasn't especially useful for me because I have found, um, for one, I've, I've already done a lot of research and so a lot of this is a little too introductory for me personally. And I don't do a lot of the, um, a lot of the work and a lot of the spell work that's sort of, that is shown in this zine. I don't do incense. I don't cast spells. I don't, <laughs> I don't do a lot of things. I'm not a witch, I guess. And I'm not even, a, I'm not a beginner witch and I'm, I'm not, I'm not a witch. So it's maybe not especially useful for me. It's, it's very interesting and I still really like it. And, um, for some people it might be nice just to have a little compendium of some basic information about a lot of very, um, What's the word I'm trying to think of? About a lot of different kinds of of magic that you can work with. Sigil magic and flower magic and a little about each sign. And, you know, it, it's sort of like a good overview of a lot of different ways that you can use magic. And you can kind of play around with each of them or incorporate some other things. I will say that if you are a practiced witch, you probably already have this information. But... Maybe you'd like to get it just for the sake of the illustrations and just to have a nice pretty grimoire if you don't if you know if you don't have one yourself or if you if you just want to look at the artwork. I mean it's really beautiful artwork. I could I could basically almost use this as an art zine. This could have for me personally, for how I read it, it could have gone in the art scene category. Anyway, I wanted to show up show it off anyway. This is Witch Tips for spell oh witch tips for spells or whatever which of course is why I really I love the title and that's why I picked it up in the first place so that is witch tips by Rain Clar at Small Small Witch and the last one that I have I just got this as a surprise in the mail from the Wasted Ink Zine Distro Patreon where I'm signed up it's as a, a monthly subscription where you get some zines sent to your mail every month and it's a, always a lovely little surprise. I really love those. I'm signed up to two right now and probably end up doing more. So 
this was a, just a lovely little surprise and it is called, sorry, uh, it's, it's a little hard to read the text here. I believe it's just called Full Moon Zine, but the title here, it says, whoa, 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 reconnect. And here it is. It's just like a nice little mini zine. I, uh, I'm kind of picky about mini zines. I like them when they're little pieces of art, but they can often be too expensive for me and expensive to ship and just feel a little insubstantial. This one is totally up my alley. It's really beautifully done. There's so much cool artwork and it's very inspiring. Um, I'll just show off some of it, you know, really, really cool artwork. You've got sort of musings and poetry sprinkled throughout and it's just a really beautiful thing. They're all very different pages. I'm trying not to show off all of it because again that's a little unfair to the creator but I do want to give you sort of a little um sneak peek I guess at the back. So this is this is fold you can unfold this mini zine and open it up to a full page spread on the back. And I always like that when mini zines are double sided. It feels like you're getting you're getting more out of it, you know what I mean? So this is folded inward and if you get it then you can open it up and see the entire thing. But as you can see, it is about the full moon and it's basically a little full moon uh ritual, I suppose you'd say. It's sort of like a full moon journaling prompt full moon meditation prompt, whatever you'd want to call it, about things that you can think about and things that you can focus on during the full moon. And I'm, I was so happy when I saw that. I already liked the scene. It's such a cute little scene, but that just was like, oh, that's so cool. And I'm so glad. And of course I got this in the, in the mail just as a cute little bonus with the other zines that were part of the pack so of course it felt really great for me but even if you're just buying it separately or looking to buy it separately I still really suggest it and so again it's called full moon zine and I got it through wasted ink zine distro I believe you can still get it there and the creator is magical realism that is the name of the zine project it says brought to you by magical realism on the back so I thought that'd just be a nice cute little way to wrap up this section. Thanks for watching. As I said, I'm gonna have some more pagan and witchcraft stuff later and probably by the time this series is over I'm gonna have a whole new batch of pagan and witchcraft scenes to show off because they are just some of my favorite things to read about even if I don't work with a lot of it myself or don't necessarily agree with a lot of it. I just really like seeing other people's practices. So hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next week. Bye.